Hi everybody, welcome back to part 13 of the Revel uh, Flower Class Corvette build. This is the 144 scale kit. Uh, and as you can see, I'm well wrapped up this morning in the shed. It's really cold in the north of England at the moment. Uh, so I'm going to have to have the heating on. And if you hear any fan noise in the audio for the video, uh, that's all that is. It's just to keep my hands warm so that I can actually do the build. So this week I'm going to be doing the main gun platform, the 4-inch platform that sits at the front of the ship on the forecastle deck here. And it's quite a complex part of the build because although it only involves two revel parts, the actual main platform uh, and the support underneath, there's a lot of etch brass work to do from the Pontos set and some of it's tiny parts that are going to take a lot of time to do. And there are also one or two techniques uh, in this part of the build, in this video, uh, that I'll be using to get the platform brass parts to fit together. So it's not straightforward by any means, so hopefully it'll come out okay. So that's all we'll have time for uh, on the Corvette this week, because I've also done quite a lot of work on the Tamiya 148 scale Mustang that's uh, the airframes already built for that and I'm ready to start painting on that and I've also made a start on the Tamiya Mosquito the 132 scale Tamiya kit as well so time's a little bit short in terms of the flower class but I want to make progress every week so we'll bring the camera over get the revel parts sorted out and we'll make a start on this uh, gun platform Okay, first up today is this four inch gun platform which goes on the forecastle deck. And we really just need the one part of the Revel kit, this G35, which is the main platform. But the rest of the assembly is all etch brass overlays and detailing. So uh, this is how it all goes together. Uh, put on page two of the instructions here. And we should end up at the end of the process with a structure looking like this. So quite a lot of detail uh, on it to get sorted out. So we'll cut the part G35 out and get the main parts of the uh, etch brass off the frets to uh, make a start. The first step really is to get this main platform and the wraparound sort it out and then we'll take it from there with the rest of the detailing. All of the Revel plastic on this uh, little platform needs clearing off so all these little bits of detail have to be removed. So I'll probably get the burr out to get the worst of that off. Because we've got a platform to go on top, a brass overlay, uh, I'm not too concerned about gouging and making marks in this platform, provided we retain this central uh, pedestal here. So it'll be the quickest way to go for this. So that appears to be nice and smooth now. We'll just test it against the brass part. That's sitting nice and flat on that plastic. It's important, I think, to get this orientated in the correct way. Pontos tell us to look at this oblong cutout and that this is the bow on this side. So I'll just make that little mark to remind me. 
And the tricky thing with the sequence of assembly for this is that there's a strip to go around the outside. I'll just take that off the fret and then we can see what we're talking about. So this strip goes all the way around the outside of the platform. It wraps around and obviously it's uh, shaped to conform to the deck here. And it's got these cutouts in the side as well. So it's obviously important that we, how we orientate these pieces. The other difficulty with these is that it's not going to be possible to solder this part actually onto the assembler here, obviously, because we've got plastic, it'll just melt the plastic. So I think what I'm going to do is form this into a ring and solder it at the end. So basically just solder the ends together. But the first thing I want to do is to form it into the same sort of radius or diameter ring that we've got on the platform. And to do that I'm going to anneal it first because we've got these little cutout slots here or these etchings and that creates weakness in the brass so it will want to bend at an angle where we curve it round those uh, little cutouts. So I want to soften the brass up a little bit uh, and we're going to have to think of something to form this around in a rough, uh, roughly the same diameter as the platform itself and then I'll just solder the two ends together and hopefully if Pontus have got their measurements correct the ring that we form with this part should just fit around this platform so we'll just have to hope for the best with that So the part will discolour like that, but that's not a problem, it'll uh, clean up again. I've got this container here with uh, some toothpicks in it, and that's virtually exactly the correct diameter of this platform. So let's see if we can form this brass part around it. starting to go to shape. You can see how it's wanting to create a bit of a kink at these weak spots. So we'll just have to be aware of those. And the other thing that I want to do is to make sure that the ends are still a curve or a radius. Because there is a tendency for the brass to want to stay straight at the end. So we'll get a strange flat shape where we do the joining if we're not careful. So I'm actually over bending the brass. And I'm actually going to roll this. Now this looks ridiculously tight. Obviously it is. But all I'm doing at this point is imparting the bend into the brass. You can see that the annealing helps the part stay in position. It's not springing anymore, it's just a soft strip. So that's where I want the soldering to be done. And I want the two ends of the brass at this point to still be curved. That should join together fairly well. I'm just uh, tinning the brass at this point. Just put a very thin coating of solder just on the ends. I'll have to be careful at this point because there's this mesh 
uh, etching around the top of this strip so I don't want to be getting lots of solder in there and blocking it all up I just want to bring this strip together now and I'll just form it on this glass so we'll just come in a little bit and see what I'm trying to do is just get these lined up absolutely perfectly I think we're just about there with that it's as close as I'm going to get it I believe So obviously that's going to need a really good clean up but I think it will hold and now we can just smooth out the rest of the curve on this part. Obviously fitting it around the platform will pull it into shape but we want to get it as round and as smooth as possible it's starting to become a nice snug fit So I think that's going to work. We'll have to glue this onto the plastic bit by bit just until it starts to uh, fit in the right place and then we'll have to do a little bit of tidying up I think around the top just to get this wire or this mesh into a nice shape. So with the brass uh, ring supported on the plastic I can just sand down the uh, soldering joint that we made and hopefully that joint should be fairly invisible that's not bad at all fairly happy with that So that joins cleaned up pretty well. Um, fairly happy with that. I think under a coat of primer it'll look all right. So I think the safest thing to do will be to glue these parts together now. So I just want to make a mark to get the correct orientation for this platform. So the center line of the platform forward is just there. And it needs to match with a line here which is the front edge of the platform the plastic platform so that marker there which is the front position dead center needs to line up with this mark which is the dead center at the front as well on the plastic so that should give us the correct orientation of that platform so the first thing to do is to glue this piece down so just some thick super glue for that job get rid of that mark now The center of the outer ring is here in the middle of this extension piece. So that sits on the deck. The rest of the outer side is supported with little pillars that we're going to have to glue all the way around. 
So that all goes together pretty well now. It's nice and tight around the platform. So I think the safest thing to do now is to uh, glue this outer ring into position. It'll uh, just prevent it getting bent anymore. And as I said, it's very soft having been annealed. So it's easily bent, particularly the uh, mesh detail around the top. And again, we've got to orientate this correctly. There's a hole in the center of this piece here which we just need to line up with this hole here on the platform then everything should come together as it's intended so get everything in position because I'm going to use some thin super glue on this and possibly a bit of accelerator so once the glue's in it's going to lock everything just a case I've locked it in position at the openings where the little steps come up I'm sorry about the noise it's uh, a lot of hailstones outside the weather in the north of England has been awful this last uh, few days and the last week really there's an awful lot of damage being done but fortunately uh, we've escaped it here a little bit so I've locked the outer circle in place next to the two openings and I'm just making sure that the platform is level relative to this mesh surround and then I'll get some more glue in I won't go all the way around because I don't want the glue to go down underneath and flood the detail so I'm just locking it in there with the accelerator so that's nice and solid now that's not going to move and now that everything's nice and firm I can just run around the edge and just sort out the little kinks that I've got in the mesh not too bad it's come out pretty well really just smooth a couple of areas out like that and as I said the brass is very soft so it will retain its shape that's come out very well I'm pleased with that the next job is to fit the little supporting legs around the aft side and I think we're going to have to check the fit of these actually on the deck of the ship because obviously they've got to come all the way down now because the deck slopes obviously the legs on this platform are slightly different lengths so all the pontos parts for these legs are all numbered differently so i want to make sure that we get the correct one i'll just fit them one at a time and i'm also going to have to check the height of this against the model itself I don't want them floating in mid-air uh, when the legs are fitted. So I'll just cut them out one at a time. And they do need folding. They've got a little flange on the side of them. And they're very difficult to hold. They're pretty small, these parts. And trying to hold them in the pliers to do the bending is fairly difficult. So what we end up with after folding those is a kind of a u-shaped channel so 
I think that's going to be okay. It's just worth making sure that it's all going to sit properly. So I'll go around and fit the other legs. There are another five of those to do. So we've hit a snag here because you can see that this leg here is longer than this one. So this is numbered, this came off the fret as 136, so that's in its correct position. And this came off the fret as 137, but actually, obviously what Pontos have done is transcribe the numbers. So because the deck slopes down like that relative to the horizontal platform, this leg here, which is longer, needs to go in this position. So Pontos have got the numbering wrong. Fortunately, it's not too difficult a job to snap these off, or I hope it isn't. And put them back in the correct positions. So they've been repositioned and you can see how those legs are now consistent with the slope of the deck. So a bit of a goof by Pontos but, but fortunately it wasn't too damaging. Just fit the last three of the legs now. The last of these legs goes here in the center and actually it goes over the uh, soldering joint that we made. So whatever uh, solder there is still there will be covered up with this last leg. And again Pontos have misnumbered this. It, it's part 138. Pontos give it as uh, 134 in the instructions. Uh, but it's the only leg left. So those are all the legs in place once we've sorted the numbering errors out. The next thing to do is to fit these hook arrangements. The brackets of some sort. And they're actually made from two pieces of etched brass. We've got a piece at the front, a plate, and quite a complicated hook arrangement at the back that leans up against it. Uh, and I've obviously done these first two. There are 28 of these to fit all the way around the platform. So it's quite a time consuming process to do all those. I'll do the next one on camera and then I'll finish the rest uh, away from camera. I don't want to subject you to 28 assemblies like that. So we'll do the next one and start with the plate which is this part. Pontos give us some spares of these assemblies fortunately. So this plate just has a small bend in the top. Pontos actually give us some locating holes for these assemblies. So that's the first part of the bracket in place. The next part is slightly more complicated. It's this part here. Fortunately Pontos give us these spares so I've already ruined a couple of them. So I don't want to damage any more. The first bend is just at the top. Just angles down ever so slightly. And then 
this part folds up like that and the two hooks on the end come forward so it ends up as a V shape with the hooks on the top something like that these then lean up against the first plate that we made like this so I'll just get some glue on that obviously there's very little glue needed for these So we're going to have to work all the way around the platform as I said there's 28 of these to do so I'll switch the camera off for probably an hour and a half or so while I get all these done and I'll come back to you on the other side so I'm pleased to say that number 27 is going in now <clears throat> I'm just replacing some of these supports in hindsight it would have been better to leave these off until after I'd fitted all these bracket parts because it doesn't matter how careful you are it's very difficult to avoid catching these so if you're going to follow this to do your own build I'd strongly suggest that you left these off until this stage. So nearly two hours later actually all of those little brackets are fitted. And that's uh, quite a strain on the eyes to do those. So there's what 56 parts just fitted around the edge of the platform there some of them do need a little bit of adjustment the folds aren't quite the same on all of them but I'll wait until I've primed the part then I'll be able to see better what I'm dealing with I've also been round and reinforced all of these uh, leg supports so uh, hopefully they'll stay in place now The next step is to fit a railing around the front here and it's quite a delicate uh, assembly so we'll have to be careful how we do that. Let's get the parts off first. So this rail needs to be bent to a similar diameter to the platform. So when I fix a railing like this, I like to do it in stages. This has uh, three supports in the middle, but I want to get the main piece fixed in place first. And again, fortunately, Pontos give us some location holes. There are three more supports that go midway, but if we can get the ends sorted out, that will give us something to work with. So uh, it looks a bit of a mess at the minute. It's not straight at all, so don't want to worry about that too much at the moment. We'll get the other stanchions in place and then that should start to pull the railing into shape a little bit. So let's see if we can get the one in at the front here. I'm just 
just fix that now at the top. It's one of those times when your fingers are just the best tool to do the job. It's starting to come together, starting to firm up a little bit. So we'll get the other two on. Just come in a little bit. The stanchions are actually uh, double etched, so they need folding over. Just a tiny amount of glue on the top, and obviously, we want to make sure that they're lined up when we do bring them together. There's a little slot in the top of the part of the stanchion and that clips into a corresponding attachment point on the railing itself. Just fix these railings or the tops of them to the stanchion I've used some super thin super glue for that. So once that's completely dry, it is setting up quite well. Now that's all set, I can just make the adjustments that we need for the railings, just get it nice and even. Or well, as even as we can anyway. Getting there with this platform now, just fitting the stanchions around the uh, perimeter here. Uh, they're going to be uh, rigged with some wire later on, or some thread later on, once the whole assembly is painted. Uh, but we just need to get the stanchions firmly located first of all. And again, Pontos give us these stanchions in a part which needs to be folded back on itself. So again, I would have preferred these to be uh, etched in thicker brass, just to save the bother of having to fold these over and glue them. It might seem a simple thing to do, but the problem with gluing these is we don't want to get any glue into the little holes where we're going to have to be doing the rigging later on. So it's a delicate operation and of course you've got to get them lined up. You want to get the holes perfectly aligned. Otherwise you're not going to get the thread through those. And I'm attaching these with some thick super glue. Pontos give us a location hole here in the perimeter. It's very difficult to see on camera, but it is there, I promise. And there's also a tiny stub on the bottom of the stanchion as well. The stanchions at these openings here, we've got some steps coming up to the entrance to the platform. They're a little bit different on either side of that. They've got a side support. Uh, so we've just got to be careful to get the correct piece for these. There's a left and right hand side. And that's just to accommodate the way that the brass bends. The arm here at the side just goes down and fixes onto the platform down at the bottom. So that's quite sturdy. These uh, ladders that are folded up here, or steps, they just go up to the two entrances onto the gun platform. 
but I'm going to leave them off for the time being. I won't fit them just yet. Uh, I'll wait till this platform's fitted to the ship and then we'll put these ladders on separately. They'll be too fragile to try and get them on now. So they'll just go safely to one side. These are the ready use lockers. These three here. So they're just folded up. And I won't fit them to the platform just yet because the platform will be a dark grey colour. And these are white, or well, they will be. So I'll paint them separately and just fit them to the platform once it's been painted grey. Just saves a job in either masking or brush painting them. So that's that platform finished and it's taken hours and hours of work to get that to that stage. It's considerably better than the Revel plastic part. Uh, I couldn't build that up to compare because obviously I needed the plastic platform underneath but uh, it really is an awful lot better, the etch brass. So I'll give that a coat of primer now just to seal everything in. And I'm not going to paint it just yet because I've got another gun platform to make in the next episode. So I'll do them all together, uh, together with the uh, gun mountings themselves. So we can get that primed and then get it into storage nice and safe. I've given the platform a coat of primer, that's Mr. Surface uh, uh, 1500 primer. Just airbrushed on and this is the other part of the Revel kit that we're going to be using. This is the pedestal that goes on the underside. Just give that a quick clean up and I'll super glue it in position. I don't think we're going to see much of this when the platform's uh, fitted but we'll still give it a good clean up anyway this is an area where it's just as well to take a little bit of care you remember that I marked up the underside of the platform to give us the forward edge here and this pedestal has gone on but it could actually have fitted either way but you'll notice that there are two uh, cutouts and one is uh, broader than the one at the front and that's to fit into some keys on the Revel deck so it's worth taking just that little bit of care with the assembly of these parts Otherwise, uh, if you got that the wrong way around, it just wouldn't fit on the deck at all. But let's just check that against the model, just to make sure that we've got everything right and it sits properly. So that's not too bad a fit. The angles are all right and the legs are sitting down on the deck. So that's all good. Obviously, I'm not going to glue this into position yet until it's been painted. So that uh, fits on there quite nicely. You can see how the platform is horizontal uh, and accommodates the shear of the bow here at the front, which is why we had to be careful to get these legs in the right order and positioned properly. But uh, that'll fit in nicely now. The breakwaters go along the front edge of the platform and obviously down to the side of the ship. But we'll fit those when we come to install the platform later on in the build. But that's all I'm going to do for that at the moment because I've got to move backwards in the next episode and do the uh, other main gun platform which goes here above this skylight. Okay, so that's it all done. It fits nicely, this platform, onto the deck. 
Uh, I've managed to get all the legs orientated such that it does sit properly on the deck with the slope of the deck. But that was quite a test and it's taken a lot of time this week just to get that one part sorted out. Some of the techniques I had to use in there to get the brass ring to fit around the plastic and getting the soldering sorted out was uh, new to me really so I had to work through that uh, to make sure that I could get the result that I wanted. But also quite a bit of this assembly is very small, the uh, little brackets that go around the outside of the platform, they alone took about two hours of work just to get those done and they were a great strain on the eyes. So I'm glad really to have got all that out of the way and be able to move on from that platform. But there we are, that's it all done, except for the painting which I'll do along with the next part of the build which is the two pounder platform which goes above this skylight at the back. And I'll be doing that next week in part 14 and if I've got time, I'm not sure I will because I've got other things to do in the shed this week. If I've got time, I might get round to be doing the two guns that fit the four inch gun that goes on this platform that we've done this week uh, and the two pounder pom-pom gun that goes on the aft side of the ship here but we'll just have to see i'll certainly get the platform done if not the armament so that'll be coming up as usual next friday at eight o'clock so i hope you can join me for that in the meantime i'll be doing some work on the tamiya p51 this is the aces series and as you can see the airframe is put together now. I've just got one or two other bits and pieces to do on it, get rid of all the seam lines on that and get it in some uh, primer paint to see what uh, the work looks like. And I've also made a start on the Tamiya Mosquito, the 32 scale Mosquito with the cockpit this week as well. So lots coming up over the next uh, week or so. But as far as the Corvette goes, I'll see you again uh, in the usual slot for the Corvette next Friday night at eight o'clock. So in the meantime, everybody, Look after yourselves, stay safe, and I'll see you in another seven days for the Corvette. Bye for now.